Derek here, put that yes. in. Okay, great, thanks. You can start. Okay, hi everybody. I am Federico Capoano. I'm core developer of the OpenWSP project. I work for um, a consortium, you can hear? Um, uh, Cineca Consortium, which is an Italian um, no profit uh, consortium that offers um, services to Italian institutions. And my job is public Wi Fi. Um, I'm also a contributor of Linux, an Italian wireless community network. And um, I'm here to present you the new OpenWSP controller. It's an application with which you can manage OpenWRT or uh, LIDI devices. Uh, you can use it to implement a mesh network or public Wi-Fi or any network you can implement with OpenWRT. Because I have a very short time, uh, less than 15 minutes, I prepared a screencast because I wanted to do a demonstration. So I will play the video and explain you the main features, because I think this is the best way to give you an idea of what you can do with this software. Okay, you see here, this is the Django admin interface. Uh, you have um, three main objects, which are configurations, uh, which represents configurations of devices. Templates are bits of configurations that are shared among devices. VPN servers um, are configurations of VPNs um, that you can use is optional um, to automate VPN connections from clients. And C uh, certification authorities and certificates are used for a specific use case of this automation of VPN certificates. So let's go ahead. Um, here I'm creating a template uh, and I give it a name um, the, for just to start with something easy, I'm creating, um, I'm defining a time zone because I know that all my devices will use the same time zone, so I define it just once and I give it the most appropriate time zone for me, which is Rome. And then I remove the other fields because I don't need them because those fields are usually used locally on each device and this is a template. Uh, it will be uh, shared and used by all the devices. I, here I'm, I show the advanced mode, uh, which you can edit the configuration in a JSON format. It's called NetJSON, look it up. Uh, it's uh, an attempt to standardize some um, configuration um, stuff related to the networking. So I give it a, a description, a descriptive name, and I save it. And this is it. Um, I'm assuming you're using OpenWRT. I also flag it as enabled by default, which will make it uh, activated on by default on each device that will register to the system. I save and I go ahead. I add a new template. Sometime, uh, this time um, a slightly more advanced. I want to add my SSH key into all devices so I can log in and manage them without um, supplying a password. So here I show how to do that. You add a file. You have to, it's a little bit of a, an advanced system. You have to know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, uh, it's really powerful, but it's not yet ready for users that uh, have no knowledge of networking. So I added the SS SSH key, and now I do something uh, slightly more complicated. I, um, let's say uh, I know many devices will have um, two gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi access points, Wi-Fi access point interface, and I, I do that. I create a template for this use case. Here, I'm probably talking in the video. <laughs> I went too fast. Here it is. I give it the name 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, access point. In, I enable by default. I start by creating the radio. Uh, so in OpenWRT, you have to define the radio, the configuration of the radio, like what, what power, what channel, and then you define the Wi-Fi interface, um, the SSID and this kind of stuff. So here I'm adding the radio. You can see that I mostly use the defaults. I can leave some, some fields empty. And I, uh, the, select, the channel, I leave it auto, so Linux will automatically select the, the channel 
uh, it finds best. I put a low power for the radio, I select my country, and then I'm ready. And I proceed with adding the interface. And you can see that there are quite many options. Um, here I select the wireless interface. There is also bridge and normal network interface. I leave all these fields empty. I, I have to manually, unfortunately, still type radio zero in that red field. Here I'm showing the options you have, but now we use access points. You also have mesh, you have a dock station. I give it uh, an SSID. Here I type in FOSDEM test, open WSP2. These fields are more slightly more advanced and we don't care about them now. And I leave the network with no encryption. And the radio is there, done already. Just to check that the result is good. If you have experience with OpenWRT, you can check the preview and it will show you the generated configuration. So if you have experience with this, it's called UCI, you can check that everything is correct. That's actually what will be installed on the system. We have package network and package wireless. And we are ready to go. And we save it. So now I show you how to create a configuration. You usually won't need to do this manually because uh, devices, if you are managing many devices, you compile a firmware that will automatically register to the application. And so you won't need to do this. It will be mostly automatic if you, if you work well with the templates. But here I'm doing it manually, inserting a dummy MAC address just for ex example purposes. You see that now scrolling down, those are the templates that are automatically selected. We just created uh, uh, in the video. <laughs> and now you, if you, um, you see that the configuration is empty, but the templates are there. And if you hit preview, you will see the uh, final resulting configuration in text plane format. You see the time zone is what we set there, which in OpenWRT is a bit strange. And then you see what we created before and SSH key. We save it. And once you save it, you can also download the generated configuration, which, which is uh, at RGZ, which contains what you usually put on OpenWRT. On OpenWRT, this will be added to the existing configuration in a smart way, so you can remove it, update it, but not mess with the existing configuration. So, now uh, I went on, uh, on a different system, and I'm showing you how a device will automatically register to the system. So this is OpenWRT, the web interface. On the new device, I just have to set up the LAN interface, so it can connect to the internet because the controller now is hosted on the internet, but you can also host it locally on a, a local area network. It's up to you, the setup, really. So here I selected the DHCP, and I, uh, the network reconfigures, and I have to log in again. This is OpenWRT. It's a Linux distribution for uh, routers and wireless networks, anything. It's also used for IoT. And now I show that um, there is a daemon that uh, tries to contact the OpenWSP2 controller. Here I'm logging in again after having reconfigured the access point. And here you see, um, maybe you cannot read, but it says new device registered successfully as um, the MAC address and the ID. And then it says configuration controller has changed, testing configuration. So the daemon also tests that the configuration works. If it doesn't work, it's, it rolls back. Uh, 10 minutes left? I, I thought less, actually. That's good. Um, so 
Here I show you that the daemon now will have uh, configure itself the U the ID and its key. This is the stuff it uses to download the configuration from the controller. And you see the host name here changed. It uh, automatically set its MAC address. So now you can take this MAC address, go in the uh, list of the devices, you update and you find it there, and you give it a better name, of course. Here I call it FOSDEM test. And you see the, the default templates are automatically selected, so it, it has already downloaded them. But I also add uh, the two gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. And you can see you can also override or add more stuff in the single device configuration. Here, just you know, this is something you could do for maintenance purpose, uh, add the descriptions. Of, of, you know, here I put maintainer as myself and I uh, add a note test device. I usually, before saving, I always check the configuration. You can see there's quite a lot of stuff from the default templates. But this is automatic, I didn't have to do anything. Once you define the templates, adding new devices is really easy. So now it's saved, and here I open the, the log grid interactive mode again to show what is performing behind the scenes and you see it was testing the configuration it's reloading everything you see quite a lot of uh, logs from all the components of OpenWRT and the configuration test succeeded and now it's configured you see the WLAN 0 interface is brought up and the SSID of the free Wi-Fi service which is bridged um, the, the Wi-Fi is bridged with a layer 2 VPN here and the layer 2 VPN is correctly running here I show it with a command so I got all this stuff done for me automatically in no time it's pretty, it's pretty powerful uh, it's still not for uh, users that don't know much about networking but uh, I really want to make it easier, but now we're getting more users. We're getting a lot of interest from emerging economies, especially India and South America. It's quite interesting. But we use this software also uh, a lot in Italy. Italian institutions use it for offering public Wi-Fi. Uh, the old version. Uh, uh, but some people, some institutions are starting to picking this up. For example, the University of Urbino is using it to manage his own uh, Wi-Fi. They also use it to provide EduRom to the students. And, okay, how much time do I have left? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Really? No. No? Two minutes. Really? Two minutes, okay, so time for questions. There's no time. <laughs> when you say you validate the configuration, is by only syntax, or are you trying to test if uh, the user that configured the channel that uh, does not support by the radio? You, you used um, a term validation. Validation is the validation of the schema before you save. Then there is a, the daemon tests the configuration. There is a default test, and the default test is that the uh, device is um, able to contact the controller again after the new configuration, but you can define your own test. Yes, but if it's wireless, you are configuring, for example, the radio. Mm -hmm. and you, um, you, you test uh, if the syntax is correct, and you test if uh, uh, it got enabled successfully, or you don't... Uh, no, no, no. no. The, the default test is very simple. The default test is I can contact the controller again. But, but, but that is internet. It's, if, if I it's not necessary the on the internet. The, the important thing is that you can uh, reach the device. Uh, if something is wrong, you can fix it manually, or you can define your own test. So in uh, how do you know that the, the Wi-Fi is correctly configured? Uh, it depends on you, on your use case. I cannot foresee all the use cases of, of the people that we use it, so you will have to define your own test in the firmware. Okay. Uh, so what it's a hard you problem. Using, uh, to communicate between uh, your controller and uh, HTTPS. Why not uh, RPCD? That's already. It was easier to implement. It's just me working on this. And also I do it in my free time, so.